Black Templars, an elite force of crusading space marines. These chosen warriors of the Emperor traverse the galaxy to smite the foes of the Imperium on countless worlds. Today, I'm going to show you how to build one of the battlefields these gene-enhanced zealots fight upon. Let's make some Black Templar ruins. My first time seeing Black Templars was back in 1998, when the third edition of Warhammer 40k was released. One of my neighbors got the starter box that came with a small force of Black Templars and some Dark Eldar. It also came with some plastic terrain, little jungle plants, and a set of plastic ruins which showed the ruined corner of a chunky battle-damaged gothic building. Now this may come as no surprise to people who have been following the channel for a while, but I was actually more drawn to the terrain pieces than to the miniatures. The Space Marines just kind of felt stiff and weird looking compared to the Warhammer fantasy miniatures that were enchanting me at the time. The ruins were cool though, and I've always felt that when you provide a setting for your miniatures, cool narratives start to leap off the table and carry your imagination away. So fast forward almost 25 years later, and with the re-release of the Black Templars, I wanted to make a piece that pays homage to this old set. In my previous video about my Black Templars army, I broke down an iconic painting by John Blanche that was on the cover of the old 3rd edition box set and has gained new prominence on some of the new releases. I decided that by combining visual elements from this painting and these ruins, I could achieve something that's quintessentially Black Templar that will be a perfect piece to represent a war-torn battlefield on some distant Imperial world that the Black Templars have come to purge of the Emperor's enemies. Now, I actually have some of those old plastic ruins right here, so let's take a closer look. As you can see, I've actually modified this set for Games of Mordheim by adding some wooden flooring and beams inside to replace the plastic tiles that were originally there. Looking at this piece, there are a few things that I really like. For one, I think I'm going to steal this distinctive octagonal pillar shape. I think it's a really solid looking shape, and it shouldn't be too difficult to do. I also really like the use of gothic arches. My design will feature some of those as well. Gothic architecture was a style that became prevalent in Europe during the High and Late Middle Ages, and I've always thought that it matches the Warhammer 40k universe thematically. In the Warhammer 40k world, mankind has had a decline and stagnation in development and progress since the age of technology. In my mind, there's a clear parallel with the real-world decline in development that seemed to occur in Western Europe after the fall of Rome, during the Dark Ages, and persisting into the medieval period before these classical ideas were reborn again during the Renaissance. Gothic architecture is therefore, in my mind, stylistic shorthand for dogma, religious zeal, and rigid superstition that permeates the 41st millennium. These medieval cues are echoed on the Black Templar models as well. They swing censers, they use broadswords, they wear knightly tabards, and describe themselves as crusaders. One other thing I've noticed is that Black Templars always seem to be bald. One possible explanation for this is that in the 41st millennium, they don't have Keeps, an online subscription service that helps men keep their hair. Did you know that two out of three guys will experience hair loss by the time they're 35? Keeps offers clinically proven research-backed treatments to stop hair loss and improve hair growth. Whether you're looking to prevent hair loss, stimulate hair growth, or just keep the hair that you have, Keeps has got you covered. Keeps has a network of expert medical advisors, care specialists, and prescribers that will get you the treatment plan you need delivered right to your door. In addition to their clinically proven treatments, Keeps also has an award-winning thickening shampoo and conditioner system. Keeps also has round-the-clock support, which will help you get the products you need in a timely basis with expert customer service. Hair loss stops with Keeps. To get 50% off your first order, go to keeps.com slash Eric or click the link in the description. That's www.keeps.com slash E-R-I-C for 50% off. Thanks, Keeps. Now let's get building on this ruins. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a series of jigs for my gothic arches using medium chipboard. To make a gothic arch, you're going to need a compass, which is that stabby close combat weapon that came in your math kit. Many of you probably haven't touched one of these since high school, but dust that bad boy off. We're going to make a pair of parallel lines, then place the point of the compass on one side with our pencil on the other. Next, draw a curve upwards from there. Do this for both sides and you get your basic gothic arch. If you want, you can experiment with moving around the center of this curve to get different pointiness. With my jigs cut, I apply these to both sides of a piece of XPS foam. If you don't attach these to both sides, one side will look good, but the other side will be totally blown out because the hot wire bends and moves as you cut from the pressure of the foam. So with both sides attached, I carefully cut out my arches. I do two different sizes. Once I have my arches cut, I take the larger size and cut it into thin slices. This is one of the huge advantages of using a hot wire cutter and it's so gratifying. 
Now that I have my arches cut, I'm going to make those octagonal pillars. I use an angle cutter from Shifting Lands USA that they kindly sent to me. If you're new to foam cutting, the Shifting Lands tools are the gold standard and really open up the possibilities for this tool. I start with a 2 inch by 2 inch long piece of foam, set my angle at 45 degrees, and cut an octagonal prism. Make sure to save these little triangular offcut pieces because we're going to use those later. I make a few 1.5 inch thick octagonal prisms as well. Time to assemble this stuff. My preferred means of gluing foam is Gorilla Glue Construction Adhesive, which is thick and tacky right away and bonds foam really well when it's dry. I make a simple L shape, 5 inches tall, and then attach my arches. One pair of these small and big arches I will rip in the middle, and these will end up being left and right sides that are ruined. You'll see. This part is really gratifying and things go together really quickly. The octagonal corner pillars have the benefit of hiding the joints at the corner as well. I cut and rip the foam wall to create a ruined look. This is going to be a little gap that troops can traverse through later. I use a sheet of foam core for the floor of the upper level, cutting a jagged corner piece, then using some offcut slices of my pillars to cut out notches where the flooring will match the walls. Next, I'm going to make a piece of facade with graphics medium chipboard. This is paperboard that will add some strength to the core of the foam details that I'll add on top. Foam alone will not be durable enough for some fine tracery type details, so we're going this way. I cut out two copies of the shape, making them end to end so I only have to measure once. I make some smaller arches in the same way as the big ones before to add some detail to the facade. Once I have a piece cut, I simply cut thin slices. These slices will be glued onto my facade. On the reverse side, I add more thickness with a one inch strip of foam. I glue that whole thing onto my structure, hiding the joints with the floor behind. My second facade piece gets sliced in two. Like the arches, these will become two ruined pieces on opposite sides. Remember when I said to save the triangular piece from before? Slice that bit up and these will be great pieces for further decorating the facade. Just like that, the facade is looking ready to be defended by some space marines. Nice. So the time has come to glue this piece down to a base. I use chipboard for this. In this intact niche, I'm going to add a 3D printed statue. I place the statue on a plinth made from small slices of my octagonal columns. The file for this statue was found on Thingiverse, and I'll put a link for it below. I next pile up some massive blocks of foam to indicate collapsed masonry and rubble from the huge structure above. I'm deliberately leaving a lot of flat surfaces. I want this piece to be able to display a nice formation of Black Templars, as sort of a tribute to this famous John Blanche painting. I had some smaller rubble made from foam chunks, and then some with loose pebbles. With that done, I cut around the structure, trimming away the excess base. Just like that, it's ready to paint. I start painting by spraying some foam safe acrylic spray paint, but my can jammed up, so I decided to switch to using gesso, which was a better choice anyways. This will add a nice thick matte covering to everything. With that on, I apply some tan craft paint, covering every surface again. In my previous Black Templars video, I talked about the Zorn palette, consisting of ochre, red, white, and black. 
we're going to stick to that palette here as well. I'm going to introduce some of those warm tones by using an oil wash, mineral spirits mixed with a little bit of oil paint. I make a reddish orangey brown and wash it over all my surfaces, making everything look like some delicious soon tofu. I line out some of the details on the structure and the statue with brown, really pushing the pigment into all the cracks and crevices. You can be sloppy at this stage. As you'll see in the next step, we're about to tidy it up. Once that's had a chance to dry a little bit, we'll come in with a little bit of mineral spirits on a Q-tip or a makeup sponge and wipe away the paint from the raised areas. I paint the ground around the structure with burnt sienna, evoking a red desert. Finally, I pick out some edges and raised details with a dry brush of off-white. And with that, I'm going to call it done. I'm really happy with how this turned out. I think it's an awesome piece for my Templars to deploy on, but of course it would work with any armies. I think I accomplished what I set out to. This piece feels classic, but also original and new with a monumental scale that the old plastic terrain never had. Huge thank you to all of my Patreons for their support. If you want to support my work, please consider joining my Patreon with the link in the description box below. I'll also have links to some cool shirts and affiliate links to all the materials used in this build if you want to pick up any craft supplies for yourself. I hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you next time on Eric's Hobby Workshop.